Hi, I'm Symphoneers, and today we're taking a look at a Zony center of the web, uh, just a big elf detective that can make some spiders, and the important part of the card, sacrifice four tokens, surveil two, you can then draw two cards and gain two life. So Zony's actually sort of a combo commander in that we can leverage that ability to really aggressively produce tokens, um, or to really... Uh, aggressively turn tokens into a resource advantage. We are playing the Peregrine Took uh, Experimental Confectioner Infinite, which is that if we get Peregrine Took down and then play out the conf Confectioner and have like one other food, uh, we can make infinite rats and infinite foods and stuff and draw our deck effectively, or Izoni can also work for converting uh, foods into rats and so on, so like she also sort of does it, although it's a little bit trickier with her. And then we have other things that like double up tokens and stuff um, to help make that process just better. Uh, the token doublers work well with bootlegger stash and things, like we have things that make our lands produce tokens, we have things that spit out tokens whenever stuff leaves the graveyard, and, and we also have just generic value cards and like Moldervine recl uh, Reclamation, and um, we're doing a lot of graveyard wiggling stuff, so we have Sir Conrad in here, and a lot of generic black value cards, and like Lolth, and uh, you know, the, the black market connections and so on, which also spits out a bunch of tokens. Um, and yeah, blood artists and things to just ping our opponent for life whenever we do sack tokens and stuff. If those tokens are creatures, we have a handful of tutors in the deck to help assemble any kind of combo or whatever in Diabolic Intent and, um, Spooky Scary Skeleton and so on. Uh, Gallic Readers and Prosperous Innkeeper to help heal us up off of generating a bunch of tokens, Mana Accelerants on one, in Llanowar Elves, and like Deathrite Shaman, and so on. That's more or less the deck, I'm missing some nuance because I'm trying to speed through it, but yeah. A bunch of things in the mana base, Nykthos, etc. Uh, if you like the deck tech and like the video and all that, like, subscribe, etc. Always helps the channel a lot. Let's get on to some actual gameplay! Whoa! This, I don't know what we're diabolic intending for, but I kind of like this hand. It's a slightly weird one. But yeah, we can do the Bitter Blossom early. And feed a Bitter Blossom Fairy into the diabolic intent. If we had Peregrine Took or the Experimental Confectioner um, going for the other one would make sense. Defense of the Heart. Um, yeah, I didn't have this in the deck initially, but when we do have infinites in the deck and I was like, this makes sense, right? It's, it's not wildly exciting or anything. Uh, it's not incredible brewing, but sometimes you just shove a thing in the deck because it's good. Sometimes you simply play good cards. Almost passed through my turn. I think I actually want to do Crawling Sensation here over the Diabolic Intent, because we don't have any, like, big wow, uh, incredible gets right now. Ooh, we could do the thing of Diabolic Intenting for a land. Tutor for a land? Yeah, you'll love to see it. Um... Crawling Sensation, mill over some lands. Huntsman's Redemption, speaking of tutors. Uh, let's do the Huntsman's Redemption here. Concerned about a sweeper. Um, nice thing with the Huntsman's Redemption is because it is a tutor, it gives us more direction with the Diabolic Intent. Like we can feed a 1-1 into the Redemption proc, get Peregrine Took, Diabolic Intent for the Experimental Confectioner, get the infinite uh, happening. Big choops! And I get luckier. Good to see you, good to have you. Um, in defense of the heart happen- or sorry, not the card. Uh, crawling sensation into bitter blossom procs at the start. So we do this, and we could Mirkwood Bats too. Uh, Mirkwood Bats is important for actually killing them. Um... Do Peregrine Took, though? 
Uh, we could in defense of the heart. Yeah. They don't. Could also dark tutelage here and delay Peregrine Took. Um, I don't hate that. The faster or like more completely we can play out any kind of infinite or whatever, generally the safer it's going to be. I miss the non-alchemized version of that card. I hate... One of the things I hate most about alchemy, uh, in terms of how it impacts play on Arena, is just, like, changing powerful iconic cards um, that are really important in other formats. And yeah, we... <laughs> anyway. Uh, Insidious Roots, hey. Uh, Huntsman's Redemption Trigger. Hmm. Utopia Sprawl, not a land, but kind of acts like a land drop. Um. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like, I think our move here is... Oh, yeah. I forgot how Insidious Roots works. <laughs> Shh. Um. Oh, does that change things? Not really, I don't think. Uh, we could do do stuff, but I think I'd like to dive all content for the confectioner. Um, where are you, confectioner? Gimme, gimme, gimme. We have so many three drops, and I missed it, didn't I? Did we mill over the confectioner? We milled over the Confectioner, God damn it! Uh, I should maybe get an Eternal Witness in this deck. In that case, sorry, that does change things a bit. Um, uh, we might just want a Lily. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, Lily, Yogmoth, Mirkwood Bats? Oh god. Uh, when in doubt, something something Lily. That, that's a big whoops. Uh, smash. Oh, sorry, they have the one ring active? I fully... Fully did not do a thing. When was the last time I put an alchemy card in a deck? Prop? I don't think ever. Unless you do include altered cards, in which case it might be like wizards class in the... Nabon deck? Like the ones that they've tweaked and changed. I did used to have the One Ring in my Paradox Engine deck because it's extremely good and important in that deck and paper. That's part of what spurred me to be like, I hate these. Because in Canadian Highlander Paradox Engine combo, the, the One Ring is like a really good and important combo piece. Uh, and that's just not the case in, on Arena. Uh, crawling sensation happens. Yay, stuff. I love stuff. So we get to Dreadhorde General again. Uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General really right putting in the work in these games so far. <laughs> Opponent draws a card off of the ring. Um, we get the Chupacabra and the thing I haven't dead. read because it's from that set. Uh... We could Grave Pact. It's a little bit slow rolly, but it seems pretty good here. Or, like, pretty good this game. Because then we can Azoni and feed a bunch of creatures into Azoni's ability and have that sweep their board. Hmm... I think that's what we're doing. The one ring happens. Hmm... I really should have an E-Witness in this deck. I might tweak that after this game. Um... Uh, an Eternal Witness to grab the Experimental Confectioner out of the graveyard. If you're unfamiliar with it, a uh, four mana creature return target permanent from a graveyard, or target card from a graveyard. Um, Smelly, but so we do this. 
So do we want to get Sir Conrad down first? Maybe? Well, why not? We can have a little Sir Conrad as a treat. Uh, Sir Conrad sure is the way Sir Conrad is. Oh, I guess we can do this too, huh? That's certainly a way to, um, handle things. Excel the binding. Uh... I will get to questions in chat and stuff in a second. So, sack all the things we tapped to do stuff. Sir Conrad goes burr. Bing, 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 bong. Liliana also goes burr. Oh, we can discard to hand size, can't we? For Conrad. Um... Crawling infestation is pretty good, although, eh. Our hand's kind of nonsense. Um, we can do swamp cycling here. That will give us a Conrad ping. Uh, grab a swamp. Um, and then we can go do 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 do. I don't actually know if we have lethal, this is just funny to me. <laughs> So, you know. Uh, Liliana continues to go burr. Izoni, normally I would be hype about Provisioner, but we're getting, we're optimizing around Conrad pings here. Uh, choose cards to keep. We want anything other than creatures. Two, three, uh, four, six. Uh, if we have to pick, keep, let's keep Yogmoth as a treat. Yeah, we're good. Oh no, sorry. There we go. We don't quite get there, but the one ring finishes the job for us. Uh, very silly kill that game. Good games to the opponent. This is an awkward hand, but it has Grave Pact. So, not bad. If we start spitting out spider tokens and sacrificing them or whatever, that will just keep our opponent's board clear, so that seems kind of neat. I'm gonna give it a shot. Our uh, Goreclaw opponent mulling once or taking the free mulligan. Um, we will do the pathway on black and uh, dig up a swamp. And pass back to the opponent. Nothing for them on uh, turn one. We'll do Aftermath Analyst here. Just cause. Uh, we don't need to hit land immediately. We sort of would have liked those mills, but we're not heartbroken that they're in the bin. Our opponent, straight vibing. Uh, Rutstein is also a good draw here, just in terms of curving out. We mill over a parallel lives that we probably would have liked, but it's fine. Um, tribute on three. They're giving us room to set up, which is good for us. Because now we can Grave Pact. Um, and we do have the full scale analyze the pollen. Creature or land card. We could be mean and grab the spider. Um, is that just fine? That might just be fine. Uh, the spider, sorry, this is a good example of tutoring stuff or whatever. Um, submit eight. Yeah, we have the spider in the stack. Oh, we could do Polychronos too. Polychronos might be less fiddly. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's do Polychronos, actually. We have other options too in terms of like Yogmoth and stuff. Uh, picking tutors in this deck is a little bit weird because outside of like the clear A-B combos, um, it's not always super duper clear what you should grab. Uh, no attacks. Titan. 
Titan seems awkward, and Titan can take out the Grave Pact. Aww. Boo and hiss. Hmm. Um. We have Nekthos in the graveyard, which is neat, but otherwise, stuff's a little bit awkward. Uh, actually, let's do this and do this. And do the th this. Take out Gore Claw. Yeah, I maybe was supposed to be more aggressive with, like, get the spider that can kill Gore Claw instantly, and that delays the Titan of Industry. Hmm. Probably just working towards, like, Izoni and using Izoni to help let convert our board position into an actual win. Henge is a good card. Mm hmm. Initially, I had Henge in this deck, but we're, we only run, actually run like 20 creatures, which is okay, but like not actually great for Henge, especially when they are mostly smaller things like Rudstein, Aftermath Analyst, etc., etc. Oh! My bush, it has been thoroughly whacked. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, I'll do this just to get the shield counter off of Titan. <laughs> great for Henge. Henge for great. Um... Sorry, do we want to do Plucron... The Titan just outsizing Plucronos is a bit clunky. I think we lol. I will see um, what happens when the spiders squash back. I think we toss the Pitiless Plunderer. I do like it, but I think we are trying to get other stuff happening. Uh... Draw a card? Ooh, binding's gone, nice. But we will catch you. <laughs> um, a little bit concerning in the sense that we want to binding the henge or the tribute, but the titan is the thing that's going to kill us. Topiary stomper goes burr. We might just be getting bodied by like mono green value. The henge and the titan. Uh, the early Titan are a lot to deal with. Um, the Rootless U does not have Trample. That's a very odd to me to not send Lol at, or sorry, the Titan at Lol and the U face. Mm -hmm. They discard to hand size. We have them just where we want them. Also, we've been missing land drops, which. Is always cool and good. <laughs> um, I think at this point we need to make spiders and stuff a just gift. to not die. So, you know, always always a great place to be. Uh XL the Graved Pack Grave Pact. Um No attacks. We might be sacking the tokens to do the Azoni thing. It depends on how they attack and so on. Only the Titan has Trample. Lamholt is a problem. Um... Okay, so Lamholt and Titan are the main problems so far. The rest of this we can sort of stall out. I uh, fake cards. Uh. Arcane Signet. Uh, 
they choose violence. Oh, they choose. Uh, this is. Oh, we're extremely dead. Never mind. I'm not. I. For, I would have just scooped if I'd remembered slash reread properly the gore claw trample thing. Cause yeah, we don't have the uh we don't have the beef here to stop this in any meaningful way. Good games to the opponent, or like we get bodied by, yeah, henge and stuff. Insidious Roots in our opener is pretty cool and good. Also big fan of black market connections here. Uh Plucrinos and Lolth are decent. Um, Polychronos benefits from a little bit of setup or like stuff being in our graveyard, but we'll we'll get there. Yeah, drawing cards, OPOP. OP. Uh, Deadly Dispute is not a land. It's in fact an instant, which, despite producing a treasure token, cannot tap for mana. Uh, now we just want to curve out with this hand of like make sure we hit black market connections in particular so that we can start generating resources every turn. Uh, Kalein, hi. Mmm, missing them land drops, alright. Yeah, and we have we, the do-nothing turn with black market connections, which is always a bit of a new valley, but now we get to start feeding life into doing the thing, so. Prosper happens. Kalein boops our snoot. My snoot. Ow, oof. March of Wretched Sorrow for the opponent. Um, bing, bang, bong. We dark mar- dark dark mar- me- 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 I'm melting now. Um, oh, what are we doing? Sorry. We can- we can roots and stuff, which might be good if we think we're working towards a zony. Otherwise, it might be good to do setup. I don't know if we necessarily want to play out Lolth, especially with the visible March of Wretched Sorrow. Crawling Infestation can also be good setup. I think I just want a, bo uh, a board or like something to soak pressure. And Pelucranos fits the bill reasonably well. It can it can recur and do stuff if we need it to. Um, don't mind me just borrowing a book from my library. Yay. Having fun isn't hard when you have a library card. Now, a, a hold for an audiobook just came through on my phone. Anyway. Uh, Wizard of Earthsea. Weirdly, I don't know if I'm going to circle back to it, because I'm- I've already read books 234? 234, yeah. Tomes, Farthest Shore, and Tehanu. Uh, Polychronos gets Infernal Grasp. Prosper. Ooh. They're, they're just vibing, keeping Prosper on defense. Mm, I would like to do the first two modes for the moment, because they're not really pressuring us on board. Prosper is four mana, and one of the best cards in Magic. So I think dirtling to kill him is pretty good. Uh, pretty worthwhile. We can do the Insidious Roots here, I don't know if that's super duper worth it. Um, chip in with the 3-2. Theoretically, we kind of want to block Kalein, even though it's just a point of damage, because we are really aggressively converting life into resources. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, one thing at a time. Wooded foothills. Speaking of converting life into resources, we fetch a... Uh, our mana is quite flexible, especially with the treasures. Just grab a forest. Um... Lolth. Uh, Lily and stuff can be good. We have a lot of reasons to do a lot of different things here. I suspect they're holding up removal, so I don't know how forward I want to play. I think Lolth maybe beats out Lily here, just in terms of being able to like produce blockers or things that can you soak removal. If they're playing specifically sweepers, the spiders are a little bit awkward, but... Will be eh. 
Um, might actually be a good time to land the crawling infestation too. Get our kind of incremental per turn advantage rolling, or like continuing to roll helps support Pelucranos, um, etc. etc. Tutelage and stuff is interesting, but again, we're if we had a uh, one of our life gainer gainers down, that would be good. Prosper, hi. We're getting a lot of room to work. <laughs> now that they're tapped out and stuff, a uh, pretty good time to play Lily. We do not hit a tapped land, or uh, sorry, an untapped mana source. Well, now we do. Um, but so yeah, let's do this. Uh, and do the Dreadhorde General thing. Eat that Prosper. Uh, Yay! Or like, yeah, we just managed to essentially tempo out the Prosper deck, um, because their deck is so hinged around Prosper being in play, the removal spell to set them back a couple of turns really uh, helps us a lot, lets us set up with Lolth and Lily and all our enchantments that do incremental advantage stuff, and we, we do the thing, clap clap clap, good games to the opponent. Anyway, this hand is fine. Um, Tarion's journal has been pretty good. Uh, sorry, do we... We probably prefer to hold on to Analyze the Pollen between the two cards. Sorry again for the people above me stomping around. Um, I think we're more likely to meet Analyze the Pollen's Claws, and yeah, Brownie Man asking about Tarion's journal. It's nice, it's just a free sack outlet that draws cards. We don't go super heavy on sack stuff uh, in this deck. So the couple of sack outlets that we do have to leverage tokens or like feed tokens into and stuff, we do prefer like Atarian's journal or I think I ended up cutting vampiric, vampiric rights? That's not the right word. The But yeah, I cut that thing. Um, we can land Grave Pact here. I, or no, we can't because it's three black. So we do need to do this and because of that, I'll bajuka bog them, or like play out our tap land. Uh, we're not really close to analyze the pollen doing anything, so I guess I'll just burn mana here too, or like help ensure that we curve up to his oni. We could benefit from drawing um, dark tutelage or whatever, like our cards that. Uh. Help set us up for some stuff. Izoni can't do her evidence thing here, which is a bit awkward. We don't, yeah, not a great hand or great game or whatever for setting up Izoni. Um, I think we go for the Grave Pact because aside from the Izoni thing, if they're holding up counter magic, yeah. Uh, we don't have the top bottom choice with laps, right? That is awkward. Um. But we can play around soft counters and stuff by doing the Great Pact there. Cosmos Elixir. Ugh. Okay. I mean... This is another one that I just feel like highlights the alchemized cards things being boring. Um... Or just, just the change. Sorry, they're tapped out, so maybe now's a better time to Azoni. Uh, sure. The thought with this is that, like, we can Blood Chief's Thirst blockers, um, like Emoti or whatever. Or we can just smash them to take out the Cosmos Elixir thing. Mmm. Uh, let's get the Pitiless Plunderer down. There's a line where we, like, kill our own Pitiless Plunderer to get evidence into the graveyard for his... Uh, yeah, no, I don't think that's actually good. I was just thinking out loud for a second. Um, we give him a bonk. Uh, I don't know, we Grave Pact here, I guess. I assume this gets countered. Maybe it's more correct to hold this. I also think... Oh no, the Grave Pact resolves. Okay. 
So that's good. Or like Grave Pact is kind of insurance for us. Uh, if they do present a scary border or whatever, we can start blocking and um, kind of break parity, parity on the blocks with that. Nyx Lotus. Okay. We're probably just Blood Chief's thirsting emoji here. Yep, yep, yep. Kill that snick. Uh, it goes back to the command zone. This is a really awkward game for us. Or like, we're really not getting lucky in terms of establishing our engine or whatever. But uh, we are beating them to death. So you know, sorry. I just realized as that happened that like, oh, if I do the infernal grasp there, we actually can collect evidence and get some spiders happening. But, yeah, the nice thing about doing it this way is we can hold up the Infernal Grasp for their turn. They roll into a Cold Steel Heart off of Emoti. Uh, and yeah, this just gives us a bit more flexibility on our turn. We now have five evidence for Zoni, which is good, because we can do the spiders. Uh, we also probably start animating the Guardian Idol here to swing in. Does depend on what we draw. Lockthwain is actually pretty cool and good. I miss Lockthwain. Um. Yeah. Animate the Guardian Idol. Vroom vroom. Uh. One. Do, 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 submit four. Make some spiders and do a smash. Opponent goes to twelve. Hmm... Kogla? Oh, that's... up to one. Yeah, it's correct for them not to fight anything because of the Grave Pact. They want to attack and drop the Grave Pact. Um... I love the host, sure. Hmm... Black Market Connections. Uh, let's do Lockthorn first, because that's more flexible for our sequencing. Hmm. Um, I will get Black Market Connections down, because that's just good incremental advantage. We'll Rutstein and we'll attack with everything. Uh, this gives us another Zoni trigger too, thank you Rutstein. Oh, we can just sack the guys now, yes. Sorry, I forgot, or this wasn't a line previously available to us, um, because we didn't know we would have Rutstein here. But Pitiless Plunderer and Grave Pact stuff happens, so we get to snipe the Kogla, and yeah, our opponent throws in the towel at that point, because uh, generating a bunch of treasure, eating a Kogla for free, scry two, draw two, gain two, or sorry, surveil two, draw two, gain two, etc., etc. That is a just a back-breaking turn, and we, uh, they throw in the towel. Good games to our opponents. Thank you for watching the video, and an extra big thank you to the Patreon patrons and YouTube members that help make these videos possible. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye